Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm doing this video as part of a prequel uh, to another video that I've done um, detailing why you might want to use a double action only uh, handgun in a tactical situation. Okay, So here I have a Glock 17, gun's empty. Um, and basically I'm in the woods here, okay? and basically I'm crouched down into a defensive situation, you know, into a defensive position here, and I'm scanning and assessing. Okay? I'm looking around. You know, I might be that I'm hearing gunshots in the distance. Uh, you know, perhaps I'm yell I'm hearing yelling and screaming. Okay, um, I'm paying attention to what's out there, not what's immediately under my feet over here. Okay, and right here I have a branch that's sticking out. Okay, so as I'm scanning and assessing with the finger off the trigger, right, fingers off the trigger because I have not identified any threats yet, I get this branch in the trigger guard. Okay, branch is in the trigger guard. And basically, if I push forward, I just tripped the trigger, okay? Uh, I'm going to demonstrate that now with a live round. All right, single round. Uh, basically, this is any striker-fired gun. It doesn't have to be a Glock, but it could be any striker-fired gun. It could be a SIG 320, anything, okay? So, as I'm scanning and assessing, I'm looking around. I get that branch in the trigger guard, okay, okay, I push forward, and there it goes, I just set up a round, okay, now, you know, it, the guns obviously should be pointing in a safe direction, so, at all times, so, it's highly unlikely that I would have hurt anybody, but I've given away my position, and maybe I didn't want to do that, okay, uh, so that's something to be aware of, um, and here I got my SIG 250, okay, this is a double action, only gun okay there you go basically double action okay uh every time i pull the trigger i get that long trigger pull and i'm going to do the same test over here with this branch okay and i can push this thing all the way you know i can push this forward all day i have to apply a lot of pressure to get that trigger to go up with this gun when i get to the point that i can actually feel it i can feel the resistance here whereas with the glock which has a much lighter trigger Okay, I can activate this trigger. Okay, I can activate this trigger without feeling any resistance here. Okay, so as I'm pushing forward, I just set it off. You know, the, the branch only bent a tiny little bit. Okay, as opposed to with the, uh, with the SIG 250 the double action trigger. In order to activate this trigger, Look how much further I gotta bend the branch. I gotta bring it all the way forward. So, and, and at that point, I'm feeling the resistance in my hand. Um, so, so that's one of the reasons why, you know, I feel that in some tactical situations, uh, you might want to use a double action only trigger. Um, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the second part of this segment where I go into a lot more detail. Um, I'll see you guys soon. Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today I want to talk about the SIG 250, okay? This is a double action only gun, okay? Um, and basically if you look in the back here, you can see that hammer every time I squeeze the trigger, it's going to come all the way back, go all the way forward, okay? Um, this is the predecessor to the SIG uh, 320 that the military is currently using, uh, and that's basically a single action gun, it's a, it's a striker fired gun, uh, so you got that really short trigger pull, okay? Um, now, this gun does have a, a modular design. Basically, there's an internal chassis that comes out. Uh, I'm not going to get into taking the gun apart right now because there's lots of videos on the internet about how to take this gun apart and pull out that chassis. What I want to talk about is uh, the tactical use of this gun. Why use this gun? Okay, Why use the SIG 250, which is a double action gun, uh, in a tactical situation uh, compared to a, uh, the, the SIG 320, okay, which is striker fired, or, or a Glock uh, 19 or 17, which is striker fired. Why would I like to use this uh, SIG uh, 250 with a double action only trigger? Okay. Now, the reason why I like using it in, uh, in some tactical situations, okay, uh, is because that 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 double uh, action trigger, okay, that long trigger pull, uh, to me is a is a safety feature. Okay, uh, with the AR, okay. I've got that safety on here, and every time, basically, I want to 
fire the gun, I take the safety, take the safety off. You know, uh, when I'm done shooting, I put the safety on. Uh, so the the AR has a safety on it. Um, you know, Glocks and and, and and you know and, and the Sig 320, they don't have that safety. Now, a lot of people will say, well, if you're not comfortable um, shooting that type of a gun, you need to train more. You need to practice more. Okay, uh, and and I disagree with that. Um, first of all, I do practice a lot. Um, and secondly, I, I'll say that I do like shooting, uh, you know, the Glock 17 very much and the Glock 19. And I, in fact, I shoot it very well. Uh, and I'll go further than that, say that although, um, you know, I shoot this SIG 250 very well, after shooting about 100 rounds, okay, um, I do see that, m that my accuracy tends to drop off because basically what happens is your, your, your trigger finger starts getting tired, okay? So there's no question about that. You know, after about 100 rounds, um, you know, I, I definitely start seeing diminishing returns. The trigger pull definitely, you know, the, the accuracy starts falling off a little bit uh, because of that, that, that harder trigger pull, okay? Whereas with, the, with a Glock, with a Glock 17, I can shoot that a lot longer, a lot more accurately, okay? Um, within the first 100 rounds, there's usually no difference. I'm used to both guns, and I can shoot them just as well. So, so the question becomes, why use the SIG uh, 250? Why use a double action trigger? Okay, I'm, I'm, if I, especially if I'm comfortable with, with with a Glock. Okay, well the reason is, you know, um, like I said, it, it's a safety issue, and a lot of times when people are, 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 you know, they're coming out of the holster, you know, they're com they're, they're working in in a lot of space. Okay, now in tactical training, okay, uh, basically, especially in, in North America, most of the time, basically, I'm in the woods, okay? I'm not out in the desert, right? There's very little desert in America. Um, so, so I have to practice for my environment. And my environment is trees, okay? And right here, I got a bush, okay? And, if, you know, especially if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm doing any tactical training, this is a realistic type of situation for me where I'm drawing and reholstering around branches, trees, you know, especially if I'm... You know, if, if, I'm, if I'm shooting, you know, in, these, in, in, in positions like this, you know, uh, uh, you know kneeling or, uh, you know, on the ground, prone, okay? So, so that's something for me to consider that, you know, not all shooting uh, is flat range shooting. Not all shooting is desert shooting. Um, and I have to contend with the branches and with the trees and with the logs uh, and all these sorts of things, okay? Uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little bit of shooting. Right, and I'm going to demonstrate that you know, over very uneven terrain. Okay, I'm doing a transition now. Okay, I don't know how much of that you can see through the through the bushes, uh, but to me that's realistic training. Okay, um, that, that's working with the environment. Now I'm going to take this a step further, and I'm going to put on a rain jacket because um, that's that's a realistic type of environment. Okay, and then I'm going to go even a, a step further than that. I'm gonna button this thing up. Okay, and again, I'm, what I'm demonstrating here is that, you know, you can't just say train harder, okay, because you, there's situations that you might run into that you don't anticipate, uh, where your fingers may not be as sensitive as you normally are. Okay, so I got a rain jacket on, and here I got a chain. 
right? And the chain is very important because you might be in a situation where you've broken down and you need to get a chain out to your truck, right? Pull somebody out, and all this might be happening while while the shit hit the fan, okay? So this is a realistic situation where I gotta get to my gun now through not just my jacket, but working with this chain. And on top of that, got my AR. So we got guns, we got chains, we got jackets, we got trees, we got bushes. We got a lot of stuff we gotta work through, okay? So, so this is why, you know, I don't always feel comfortable uh, working with just a striker fired pistol. In some situations, I prefer having that double action trigger, okay? So let's get back into the, into the trees again. I have to do a magazine change through all that now. Not because the gun was empty, but just to do it. Okay, they're still around the chamber. I'm going to reholster that. So move a little bit more. Take some cover. Do a transition. Alright, so I hope you could all see that, or most of that, through the trees and through the branches. Uh, but that's a realistic type of situation where, you know, you're not always dealing with controlled circumstances. There's a lot of things that can come between my holster and my gun uh, in, a real light, in a realistic environment. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.